Gold Road, ESO's next big expansion is coming on June 3rd. This is Khan from Ninja Pulse, and here's a rapid rundown of PTS Week 1. Buckle up, because I'm going to go fast. Gorgeous new zone, the West Wheel featuring Skingrad and the Athelia storyline. Plus, scribing may be the biggest system ever added. HDR support, graphics improvements, tons of collectibles, and 200 new furnishings. Also, a new trial, and yes, it's another banger, with four new trial sets. The light support set, Zorin's Masterpiece, is like a slightly weaker per lesson ward, but it will boost sustain a little and won't shrink as people start to die. Easy to get perfect uptimes with no conditions. The heavy set, Lucent Echoes, has a very nice bonus for dungeons and might replace Elemental Catalyst in trials. Since it's applied to the group, not just one target, and it's easier to keep up. The only condition is staying above 50% health, and if you do dip under, it's gonna help you there too. The light damage set, Mora Scribe's Thesis, is good but weird. A typical trial comp doesn't need the second bonus, but you could drop something else if everyone wore this set. Depends how many buffs the group can stack consistently. In really good trial groups, maybe nine of each. More if you really build around it. Casual groups, not so much. The medium damage set, Slivers of the Null Archer, is a proc set. Damage seems excellent, but it can hit any target, and not just the boss. Could be a liability in multi-target fights, and for single targets, we already have Reliquent, so maybe a good set for Arcanists who don't want to use Coral Riptide. I have not tested these properly yet. Day 1 of PTS was a bust, as you may know, so there'll be a clearer picture and maybe some changes before launch. But I like how these sets are pitched at broadening our options, and not just swapping one meta for another. Crafted. Highland Sentinel looks stronger than the crafted sets we typically get. At max stacks, it grants 6.7k critical chance. Berserking Warrior only gives you 3.7, so this is crazy. But you cannot move, so it's probably only going to fly on the dummy and some of the older, simpler boss fights. Tharaka's Strike is for heavy attack builds, but since most are sorcerers, you'd think they'd have quite a bit of Major Berserk uptime already. Threads of War is a great name, and gives you almost permanent burning, concussed, chilled, or sundered, depending on your main weapon. A Warden could gain a lot of damage from that, but for other classes, I don't know if it measures up to some of the really good 5-piece bonuses that we use. Overland. The light symmetry of the wield could be pretty strong, if you have enough status effect uptimes that are good but not great. The medium, Macabre Vintage, is tough for me to call without testing. It looks pretty nice, but in trash pulls, the lowest health adds die first. So the proc damage won't spike until the big targets start to drop, and by that time, everything else might be dead. The heavy, Alien Refuge looks strong, but not super necessary in PvE. We already have access to a lot of mitigation, so it'd take a special circumstance for a tank to drop a valuable support set just to get more, but you don't have to keep blocking to get the 3 seconds of mitigation, which is cool. Maybe my PvP buddies will find more use for this one. The new mythics are pretty out there. The Rork and Steam Guards basically give you a half second magma shell, just negating big hits that are at least 5 seconds apart. That's a pretty big crutch, and I can see it being fun to use and to nail that timing, but I can't think of that many places where I'd actually use it in PvE. The Shadow Queen's Cowl is fun as hell, I'd love to see more total role-playing mythics like this. Being able to see the outlines through walls when you're doing a heist or a black sacrament is just a really cool idea. The Saint and the Seducer has been compared to Daedric Trickery, but all the buffs are different, and they don't stack like Trickery can, but they do apply a debuff to all enemies around you. The randomness will appeal to some, but not others. There aren't many combat changes this time, because scribing is the main thing to be tested and balanced. If you don't know how scribing works and what the implications are, I just posted a video on exactly that, with more to come. Arcanist Flail is now slightly more expensive, but with a slightly stronger heal. Necromancer Siphon got buffed by 33%, which is pretty big, and not just the damage siphon, also tether. Nightblade Shade is now pure AoE damage, Templar Spear now immobilizes, and the Warden Betty Netch now increases your damage done by 5%, so long as the auto purge hasn't been triggered pretty smart way to bump up the Warden for PvE. Werewolves got a few interesting buffs. Light and heavy attacks now deal bleed instead of physical damage, and Deafening Roar now turns heavy attacks into a taunt. Ferocious Roar now buffs the damage from Howl and its morphs. Gradual Ravage Health potions no longer interact with Mechanical Acuity, and the Rush of Agony proc now has a larger radius and a delayed activation. It's only one second, so it shouldn't make much difference if you use this set in dungeons. Skill styling is also coming, letting you change the colour effects on some abilities. 
Some are quite fun, like the Red Snipe or the Orange Whirling Blades, but the magical ones are generally way cooler. The purple Wall of Elements looks fucking sick, and I really like the Black Force Shock. On the preview server, I think this was called Negative, and that's what it looks like. Just a bit of fun. But I think players are going to be really into this, and the new Trial especially. There's actually quite a lot more. HDR support, better control of character resolution, so you can see all your teammates in high res without waiting for them to pop out of low res, or not if you prefer. The law library now includes all your hireling stories, some of which are really good. New sustainability features like dimming and limiting frames in menus. Health bar display is more responsive, showing heal absorbs and heal immunity. A new tribute deck, new achievements for learning weapon skill lines, and one for completing all the stories from the last decade, which unlocks a pretty nice skin. That's week one. I hope that's got you up to date. This is a big release and Ninja Pulse is going to be there, covering the trial, the zone, the story, skill styling, and of course, scribing over the coming weeks. Keep in touch on our Discord, and if you like what we're doing, we'd be super grateful for your support. Take care, and thanks for watching.